Hello and welcome to another Scardcast Battle Report. Today, across this overgrown industrial area, we have the Tyranids facing the Talarn and the Adeptus Auroritus. Let's begin. And here we have the table. We are playing priority targets, which is one where you get to move the objectives. Always super fun. Uh, it's mission 33 of the GT mission pack. Priority target. Okay, so let's dive into the two armies. Let's take a look at who is fighting over this awesome looking terrain. Let's dive in. And here we have 2,000 points of Tyranids. Chris, take it away. All right, so we got a battalion with a Melanthrope, a Neurothrope. He's going to know Catalyst as well as have the Relic for plus one to cast. The Barb. Yep. We got a, um, a Prime. He actually only has seven Talons and a Geno Glance. None yep. of that. Uh, this is a WYSIWYG full warrior unit. I'm mm -hmm. um, paying the, the one CP to give them, they have plus two to their cover save instead mm -hmm. of one. And then two units of Rippers. This is going to be an Exocrane. This is a Tran effects with an Acid Spray. Mm -hmm. This is a Moloch mm -hmm. and a Maliceptor that knows the horror. Okay, and what is the... Jiromungo. So okay. they're always in cover unless they advance the charge. Very cool. And then we have a Patrol of Behemoth. Yeah. Which is three units of ten guns. A Swarm Lord that knows Psychic Scream and Onslaught. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this is my Warlord, but he's going to give up his Warlord trait for the plus one strength, plus one damage, plus one AP. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to spend one CP to give him the side and talons relic that comes with Behemoth. Yep. And he's going to know the plus one the wounds Behemoth psychic power as well as Proxism. Very cool. Awesome. So there you have it, folks. 2,000 points of Tyranids. The Adeptus Sororitas and the Talarn join forces to push back the Tyranid onslaught. So, I haven't brought them onto the channel in a while, and it's time to see what this army can do in 9th edition. A little bit of a change of pace. So, I am running a battalion detachment of Talarn. Now, in the FAQ, Talarn was changed to, uh, because tanks could uh, can now move and shoot without penalty, and that was the Talarn thing from the beginning. Now, all vehicles can advance and count their weapons as assault weapons which is pretty cool. Okay, well, that's just a little bit. And then, of course, infantry can advance and shoot with anything but heavy weapons, which is also pretty snazzy. It is a battalion detachment. I have good old Al Rahim. Well, you know, a company commander with a plasma pistol. That's kind of his whole shtick. With his command squad with four melter guns and an astropath with the plus one to save power. Then we have one, two, and three squads of Talar infantry, 10 strong, two of them have grenade launchers, and one of them is equipped with a flamer with the new updates to flamers. Makes it a 12-inch flamer, awesome. Then we have five Bulgarin, four of them have slab shields, one of them has a brute shield, and they all have the mauls. Two tank commanders, one with an execution autocannon and heavy bolters all the way around, festooned with heavy bolters, and one with a battle cannon and a last cannon and a hunter killer missile, of course, because why not? We also have a chimera with a heavy flamer multi laser, a wyvern with just everything, and a basilisk, and of course, I have given up my warlord trait to give the basilisk tank ace full payload. So he's automatically three damage attacks on all his attacks. And last but not least, we have a Calidus Assassin joining the force as well. Then we have a patrol detachment of Adeptus Sororitas. These are Valiant, Valorous Heart, and I have a unit of Seraphim with two hand flamers, or two with hand flamers, a Canonus, Two units of five Battle Sisters, a Rhino, a unit of six Repentia, and an Exorcist that has been converted. 
Now, these were painted by Best Overall Painting. Thank you very much for that. Really appreciate it. Okay, so that is 2,000 points. My relic is Korov's Akila on the company commander. And that's it. Let's dive in to the mission. Okay, so and here we have it. So after the I decided to be the attacker and he was defender, so he picked that side. So I moved this objective this way. Then he decided to move both of mine this way. So I grabbed his and I moved it out into the open. And in retaliation. So it is triangle deployment, basically from that corner to the middle of the table here. It's like a weird deployment style. Uh, and uh, he starts deploying first. We'll be back after deployment. And here we are after deployment. Now, uh, the Tyranids have put a Morlock, a Flying Hive Tyrant, two units of Rippers, and Deep Strike. I decided to spend a CP to outflank or you know, strategic reserve my command squad. I have five Seraphim in Deep Strike, like jump down, and I've got the Kalos Assassin in Deep Strike as well. In reserve, I, I mean, I put five sisters, Chimera with guys, company commander, 10, battle cannon, exorcist, full payload, uh, exterminator auto cannons, the Hydra battery, essentially. Uh, not a Hydra battery, but a Manticore. Not a Manticore, a oh, Wyvern, oh my goodness. 10, Bulgrin with the Astropath, Assists of Battle, and then the Repentia with the Cannoness in this Rhino over here. And uh, the Tyranids have responded in kind. 10, 10, 10 Gaunts, uh, uh, Acid Spray. Acid spray. Exocrine, Malice, Malice, uh, Malanthrope, the Prime, the Warriors, the Neurothrope, who is the Warlord, by the way, uh, the minus one strength bubble, Malice Scepter, Swarmlord, right in the corner yes. over there. Ready to go and murder some stuff. Yeah. That's kind of how that works. Okay, so with that, we roll off our first turn. Hiya! I rolled a four to his four. This is the third tie we've rolled. I rolled six to his three, and I will choose to go first. Have fun, good luck, enjoy yourself. And here we are after the movement phase. Uh, I decided to advance this chimera up this way. The sisters just kind of moved up together with the guard and the commander. The exorcist tank commanders moved up just to get some shots off. It is very dense terrain, so that's going to be a big issue when it comes to all of my shooting. Uh, the Bulgrin have moved up. I did pick domination, bring it down. And priority targets, and that's my priority target, as well as the Tyranids have picked Bring It Down, because I've got tons of tanks, priority target as well, and Domination. So it's oh, the wow. exact same back and forth, so we'll see how that goes. The Exorcists and the and the um, Candace moved up that way. The Sisters have stayed there, as well as the, um, at the start of my shooting phase, I'm going to give them reroll ones to hit, and uh, we'll dive in with the Exorcist with... Uh, Ignoring all hit modifiers, which is awesome, and um, also rerolling the dice that it has with its Exorcist launcher. So let's see if I can take out that Exocrine. And through the jungle and the desert, let's see what happened. So I shot a lot. I did spend a lot of CP. Uh, aerial spotters on the full payload, Basilisk, all that stuff. I brought this extra screen down to three wounds remaining, and I killed two Gaunts in the back with the, uh, with the Wibrin. The minus one to hit has, uh, has proven to be quite impressively good at keeping <laughs> not that he doesn't he also has the malanthrope which would about be about the same <laughs> yeah. so so whether i have jungles or not it doesn't really matter he also you. spent two cp for minus one strength which made all my strength five strength four and all this Huge. stuff as well which makes a big deal too end of the movement phase on turn one these gaunts have advanced and sort of moved up that way this Exocrine is limping, only has three wounds left, moved up and then spent a CP to act as normal. However, uh, to act as if it didn't move. I uh, have been rolling for my Kalos Assassin so far. None of them have been, <laughs> none of them have been extra CPs. Um, the, you're going to? Yeah. Okay, it's two CP for that, but yes. Okay, yeah, definitely yeah. that, yeah. Okay, so he's going to try and heal his Exocrine. Is he spending the two CP for that? Yeah. And then does he spend more? He does, so it's 3 CP for that. D3, extra wounds, gains 3. So he's up to 6. Good old rapid regeneration, whatever that's called. Okay, so that flamer that flamer guy is uh, moved up as well. Malanthrope, uh, Malceptor, Neurothrope did uh, Kata on the Warriors and then 
smote my Bulgarin. And then Swarmo just eh, being conservative over here, as well as these Gaunts are probably going to get pushed to get his domination. And they Metabolic Overdrove to get onto that objective to get his domination as well. So with that, moving into the shooting phase, or well, rest of the psychic phase. And a great shooting turn. No, I'm just kidding. Um, he killed one Bulgrin with smites, and then I went to ground with the Bulgrin, and they just put their slab shields down and soaked up a flamer and two volleys of an exocrine. <laughs> and they're fine. And uh, in shooting, he killed one sister battle with the uh, the the three warriors and uh, with the three heavy venoms. And then the minus one AP was ignored thanks to Valorous Heart. Uh, but other than that, he did get his domination. He got his uh, priority target, which is that one back there. So we're moving on to turn number two for the forces here. Let's see what happens as we move on to uh, the second turn. End of the movement phase. Bulgrin moved up. Uh, Chimera moved up to get heavy flamer in range. I love the 12 inches on the flamers now. Yay. Uh, this unit advanced this way. They rolled a six, so they can move 10 inches because they were going through the terrain. This unit you know, just moved up as well. Uh, the sisters moved up that way. Uh, the Repentia have sort of moved back, uh, but then I've used the, the Wyvern as a screen, and then I was able, they rolled a six for advantage, which is great, because then I was able to get one onto that objective over there and screen out basically my side here. So I've got a screen, as you can see. Now, the Morlock can kind of come in an inch away and do like mortal wounds and stuff. However, um, the, the key is not to leave like your characters exposed and to, um, cause it can't charge after. So it's going to come out and then it can't kill anything to create a zone to then bring something in. Uh, so that's important to take note of as well, which means that the, uh, rippers and stuff like that are, are going to be pushed back. So my plan right now is to try and take out as much of his objective secured as possible and then maybe use a Bulgrin to go in and bully some of the Tyranid Warriors over here. So with that, let's dive in to the shooting phase. Oh, Psychic phase, technically. I rarely use Psychers, so I completely forget what they do a lot of the time. Oh, and my uh, uh, Miracle Dice for this uh, battle round was a six. Yes. Something finally died. It just took my entire army. To take six wounds off of the Exocrine, he did the stratagem for minus one strength. So he used up all his CP for that. And it literally made most of my shooting ineffective. I super shot like maximum shots on the battle cannon, did nothing. The Exorcist spent CP to ignore negative modifiers and reroll the amount of dice to do shots, didn't do anything. And then finally the full payload Basilisk was like, blam! And then two wounds that he did got through, max payload paid off, and I just... Took the six wounds off. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, I'm on a five. Yeah, so a morale test on those gaunts. They do fail, and he's going to lose one. <laughs> six, seven. Okay, you're watching the hive mind going into, uh, and two more go down. Perfect. As the wyvern killed one gaunt. <laughs> two, two. <laughs> two gaunts. Yeah. The wyvern killed two gaunts with his uh, super wyvern cannon. Uh, everything else, like the first rank fire, second rank fire, Guard units basically and helped with the chimera. I killed the two units of um, of chaff over here, and I decided not to charge the warriors because with his pylons and stuff, he had so many models. If I don't do well, he can just take the objective away from me, and I don't want him to score ten points for primary. I want to keep him at five. So that's and they don't have minus one. I mean plus one armor because I failed the plus one armor um, psychic power again for the second time in a row. But with that, I have three CP left. Chris goes back up to one CP. We're moving into turn number two uh, for the Tyranids. And let's see what the Tyranids can do as we move in to this turn. And here we have it. Uh, after reserves, we have some Rippers coming on this side. He's basically trying to zone out my melter guns. <laughs> so he put the other Rippers back there to try and zone me out as well. They advanced up. The Tyranid Warriors have moved up, basically helping onto the objective as well. He didn't move the, um, the Flame Burst Tyranid effects and everything else sort of moved up. And then he's going to do Psychic Phase. He's going to try and do as many mortals as possible here. And then, of course, out of Deep Strike, Kenza Morlock does no effect to these and then does... Three mortal wounds to that unit of Talarn. We've seen worse. We've, we have fought in Catechin, you know. Just saying. <laughs> You're not like any of the desert worms that we've had to deal with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, of course, he's probably going to push himself with Swarmy up that way and go after those, um, those uh, Sisters of Battle over there. Okay, so Psychic Phase. 
End of the turn. Luckiest Chimera in the world. Survived with one wound remaining after getting flamed twice and three Venom Cannons. Ooh, I passed a lot of five-up saves. <laughs> and he's okay. Uh, this unit bravely died because they got shot by Death Spitters. And then that unit of sisters just got mauled. Completely mauled by Swarm Lord. Um, and he's staying on that objective and staying on this objective. So he's getting dominate. He decided not to charge me so he doesn't lose his save bonus because he gets a two-up save, basically, which is amazing for them. So he just doesn't want to lose that. And uh, with that, I'm moving in. And he decided to keep his... Uh, Flyrant and Deep Strike. Just the fact. Okay. So with that, we're going to dive into the rest of my turn three. What? This is nuts. Okay. So crazy, super cool. Miracle Dice is a one. Awesome. Awesome. Which is fine. Ones are as good as sixes sometimes for Miracle because you can order pass morale and stuff. It's really neat. Okay. So with that, let's dive in to turn three for this, the Imperium forces trying to flush out these Tyranid monstrosities. End of the movement phase. Okay, okay. So, uh, this Rhino emptied out the Repentia and the, the, um, the Repentia and the, the, the commander, the Canonus. They moved up this way. Swarm Lord has also been targeted by a Kalid Assassin. This is an original Assassin that I painted up way back in the day. Uh, this guy just moved around this way. It's minus one to hit for the horror, so I'm probably going to shoot at stuff that I'm already minus one to hit against. Uh, I got the heavy flame over here into there, kind of put as much as I could into the Morlock. The Bulgren have moved back to potentially charge the Morlock. These are just going to move, 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 and take that objective and screen out against those warriors. The outflanking command squad has come in, probably going to try and take out some of these Ripper Swarms, while the, Sel the Seraphim have dropped down to flame with their Flamer Pistols, that unit as well. So I've just essentially continue to try and block it out here uh, I still I probably have to start dealing with them at some point even though they have a two up save and my reserves are all committed to the table so with that let's dive into the psychic phase over here end of the turn okay so an, an impactful turn the melters and the flamers and pistols did kill this little unit and put uh, this one has two ones left one, one, one wound yeah, left. Two, one wound left. Two, two, two. He's taken two, so he has one left. No, two left. I count. Yeah, it's one left. So yeah. he's taken. He has one left. He has one left. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So over here, I was <laughs> two wounds left on the on the Morlock, and he killed my company commander. Almost killed him. Uh, I did kill a few. I killed five of the warriors this turn. Um, I did have to sacrifice. Yeah. I did have to sacrifice my Repentia, though. They did lose three to to Overwatch. If they wouldn't have lost three to Overwatch. Oh, that would have been, been so good, so good. Uh, but I was able to hold that objective to hold him down to five primary points. And then Swarmlord lived with one wound <laughs> against the Calidus assassin <laughs> who didn't do any wounds. We would have just killed Swarmlord. Hilarious. So with that, we're moving. Oh, and then uh, this guy killed a couple of warriors. So nothing crazy happened. We're moving on to the final turn. Oh, sorry, not the final turn. We're moving on to turn three for the Tyranids. The Swarm Lord has to come in. So let's see. Another oh, Swarm Lord. The Why Flying Hive Tyrant has to come in. But it's all about the points right now. And uh, let's see how it works as we move into the third turn. Look at that. Oh, man. What do you think is going to happen? I, I can't believe that guy lived with two wounds. That guy lived with one wound. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Okay, moving on. End of the movement phase. Malathrop's moved up, basically to just soak up the souls of these guards. <laughs> uh, the psychers have all sort of moved up this way to put a whole bunch of mortal wounds in that general area. He stayed there. The yeah. flying hive giant oh. have dropped down. And so, oh, he's gonna fall back. He, oh, he's definitely gonna okay. fall back. He's like, I'm gonna uh, run away. This is how far he falls back. You ready? Awesome, awesome. <laughs> he just doesn't want to fight Bulgrin right now. Oh, wait, uh, minus one. Yeah, he's not going to fight. He doesn't want to fight Bulgren. No. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so he's there. He's going to try and shoot the Melter Guns and then charge the Seraphim. Cool. So with that, we've got... Because uh, he has plus one to charge, which is awesome. And he has a CP if he needs to re-roll that charge oh. as well. Okay, let's dive into the Psychic Phase. I'm rooting for the Little Sisters of Battle and the Talarin because I haven't used them in forever. But the Nids are like all over the forest. Oh, no. Okay, end of the turn. The guardsman did die, but the Malanthrope was forced to sort of like move around and get in front. He fell back, as you saw. The Calidus finally killed Swarmlord with a light, with a good wound in there, but they had to charge and kill the um, the Hydra thing. And then 
Uh, this one, they're, they're in combat here, so we'll see what happens with that. Okay, so uh, I only get five primaries because this little ripper survived and ended up basically taking my objective over here. Uh, this did kill all the... Um, the Seraphim, which is a shame. And then I did lose my Cannoness to Mortal Wounds, which is also a shame. But with that, let's dive into the next morale. turn. Okay. I do owe you morale, which is what I was going to do there. Uh, they do run, so he also runs. He's like, ah! Yeah, yeah, he would kill them if we The Melted Gun runs away. But with that, let's dive in to the final part of the game. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, movement. They moved in advance to get onto that objective from the Chimera. Chimera stayed back. Um, and then I basically just consolidated my forces here a little bit. I advanced the Rhino and fell back with the um, Calidus Assassin. Uh, but she can fall back and charge, I believe. I'll just double check that in a second. And then this moved up, and then everything's here. So my plan is to just consolidate my gains on the objectives here to try and kill some of the, the big creatures that I need to kill. The Calidus can indeed fall back and charge, so she's actually going to fall back this way. She can also shoot when she does that as well, so she's going to get up here and try to deal with that Neurothrope. Might as well. It's a little easier to kill than uh, the Malceptor. Okay, so end of the turn, I did kill all but one warrior. The Bulgrin brought the Malceptor down to one wound. I finally killed the Morlock. <laughs> the Assassin did charge into the Neurothrope and only got two wounds through. No, even with a reroll, so it lived with one wound <laughs> remaining. Oh no, so I was really hoping because then I could steal some more command points for killing characters with Assassins. And just make me get five instead of Correct, I did, I did get, give, you still have only five because that's, oh, that's two, right. yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. So he only gets five primaries. I do get my domination. I got another three for bring it down. So with that, we're moving into turn four for the Turnids and they only have another five primary points. Okay, end of the movement phase. Hive Tyrant moved this way. Uh, they kind of moved around. He fell back with the Malanthrope, and I used No Escape, or whatever it's called. So I rolled two dice, <laughs> and on a six, I was going to do a mortal. And they killed the Malanthrope as it fell back. Yes! Spent my last CP on that. It is the most underrated stratagem that I never used, which is hilarious. Uh, and then over here, he did say in combat, because he, he wants to be able to smite and stuff with the Neurothrope. Okay, so with that, we're moving into uh, the shooting phase and psychic phase. Okay, here we are after the turn. Those guardsmen died. Oh, no. But he did use an overrun, so one CP to move, basically getting him right up in there, which is awesome. Uh, over there, the rhino just took three damage, and the Calidus assassin did die to a bunch of mortal wounds, sadly trying to survive. Okay, so with that, I, because my, uh, my, um, I took a wound on the astropath, the sisters all died. I should have actually done that to get five, uh, well, not five, not now. But, uh, he did deny me all primary points this turn, but he only got two points for bring it down, and he did get, uh, priority, and he got dominate as well. So moving into the turn, I get zero for primary, and we move into the final part of the game. So let's see how we do. Okay, so crunch time. I did end up advancing this tank through, uh, through the woods so I could get onto this objective. He's already minus one to hit anyway. And because he's Talarn, he can advance and shoot guns. Plus he can order himself to shoot and then move or move and then shoot. Well, he doesn't need to because he's already on the objective. I need to kill these two here. And of course, staying out of three inches of him. But I need to kill two, these two here or to basically take that objective over there. So I've got some guns here ready to just fire. And then he's going to use his Talar move to shoot and then move on to that objective. I'm holding this objective here. I just need to get my last dominate. And, uh, and that's it. I don't think I'll be able to get more bring it downs unless my shooting and killing them goes really well. And he is catted, and he's in the forest too, so that's going to be a little harder to deal with. Okay, so I was able to do it, but it literally took all of my shooting <laughs> to kill the two models. And uh, so I was able to stop him from getting his, his 15. I got him to 10, and I was able to keep my priority objective here, and I was able to get my domination right at the end. So that's it. We're done for points on my end, and it is now the final Tyranid turn. Okay, so at the end of the game here, this guy did die because of the double flame. Actually did a bunch of damage and just absolutely nuked my, um, my Lehman Russ. Yeah. Oh, that was brutal. Like 73s went through and he just died. Uh, over here, he did kill both here, which gave him another three points and three points there. But the Rhino survived even with all the smites and stuff. And then that failed to do any damage to the Rhino in close combat. So the Rhino lived. 
So let's take a look at the priority. He does get his uh, domination for holding three, and uh, he gets another point. So 25 points for primary, 25 points for primary. 15 points for domination for me, 15 points for domination for him, and for priority, and for me. I got nine points for bringing it down, I believe. Oh, no. How many points is that guy? Two. Two points? Because I hadn't counted him. He's less than 10 or whatever? Yeah, yeah, no, I hadn't counted him. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have 9, 10, 11, and he has 9, 10, 11. It is a down the middle draw. Wow! <laughs> uh, just because I had forgotten that the Malanthrope counts. <laughs> so what's the, the final scoreboard? Oh, oh my and you killed him with me I out. did, I did. He fell back in the bulgrim. I'm like, ah, stab Man. you. What a great game. This is absolutely hilarious. So the total was 30, 40, 50, 60, 66 plus 10. So 76 to 76. Wow. With the painting votes. What a crazy game. Down the middle draw. I hope you enjoyed it. It came down to the wire. <laughs> Considering nothing really happened the first couple of turns, nothing, that was nuts. Yeah. That was nuts. You two guys. Well, we, of course, thanks a lot to Labyrinth Games for setting up the game. Uh, make sure you check them out on the links down below. As always, Chris, thanks for having me on the channel. No problem. Awesome. And your campaign's going well? Uh, it's going great, actually. Fantastic. You also have a, a couple, you've been running a few 40K events and stuff, so make sure you stay, li stay tuned for the events on the Facebook page. Check the link in the description down below. Okay, other than that, that's awesome. Good game, buddy. Yep. Who is your MVP this game? Um, normally I say Swarmlord, but he died like a little bitch. Uh, definitely going to say Flyman. Everything he touched died. <laughs> of course, thanks for uh, watching a family-friendly show. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, of course, my casualties. Look at that. Boop. I literally lost everything except for a rhino and the coolest Lehman Russ ever that was converted by my brother. Uh, it's so cool. That's a lot of plot. But uh, that's literally a big pen that's turned into a nice big battle cannon uh, as well. That was a great game. That was really fun. Yeah, I like how we kept... It's uh, back and forth. With the minus one. Yeah, and with, it was all minus one yeah, across the board. So it just much. made everything live. Nuts. It was crazy, except for your giant super flamer that ended up like just nuking uh, me. Really? He lives... That's a win for me. That's yes, crazy. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. So close. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. Oh, and I got my basilisk. Shouldn't forget him. Great basilisk. That payload was good. It was, it was awesome. What a fantastic game. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below. Click that like button. And if you haven't supported me on Patreon yet, head on over to the link and join the Denizen community today. After all, I'm Scar, your great fellow, signing off until next time. And this is, ah, the Imperial Kitten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, bye everybody.